Loiter, aka Mega Blitz. In today's video, we're going to be comparing the Orlando results with the Orlando tier list that I had made. Just kind of going over all the day two decks of Orlando, seeing if I was correct on the tier list and things like that. I had done this for the EUIC um, day two video as well, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really fun. So I wanted to do it again here. So with our first place list here, we got Tord Zard. Um, funny thing, actually, the person that had one being Liam uh, Holber Holly Burton, I believe, uh, had made a Twitter post saying that <laughs> eh, let better players do the cooking and stuff for you. I'm going to lock in Tord's list for Orlando and had posted this, I think it had been about seven days ago at this point now, uh, and then ended up winning the whole thing, and Tord had commented and retweeted the post saying, congratulations, very nice, what a legend or something. Uh, and it was just very ironic that, you know, seven days ago, he told everyone what he was playing, locked it in, and was playing Tord Zard. So this is the exact same list. I do not want Builder open as image. Uh, the exact same horde list that we had seen at EUIC, so the 1-1 one, one Badoof Barrel line, you know, the Pidgeots, the Luminions, the Cleffa and stuff. Um, a lot of people are kind of playing this very similar deck or a very close variation of this. Um, it's kind of proven to be the just best deck in format, the kind of ruler of the format right now. It's got really great matchups, you only take a couple bad matchups into certain things, and even those bad matchups, um, mostly being like Stall, is kind of... Eh, and you can kind of play around it now. You have different answers to things. You have two hour scenario. You have, you know, Cleffa with like free retreat and stuff. So if you end up like pulling up a road time, you can retreat out of the Cleffa. There's all kinds of different things you can do now into that matchup with this list that you couldn't do before, I feel like. Um, and I had put this up in S tier, being kind of just the best deck in form of the deck I thought was going to win. And I think everyone along with me had also agree that this deck was going to be the deck to have to worry about. It's about 20 to 25% of the meta right now, and I don't think anything's going to change coming to Indianapolis. Now, going into our second place list here, we got Ancient Box. Now, I had put an Ancient Box down here in Tier 2. I did not think it was super great. I think Tier 2 is still a good position for this deck. It did have a nice run, and Jake had piloted this very well, and really kind of showcase that it does have stuff um it had one euic in the seniors division um i could see this maybe going up to like top of tier two maybe bottom of tier 1.5 um but very nicely done bringing ancient box all the way up to second place definitely did not expect ancient box to make it into top eight let alone get all the way to the finals and come in second place another deck that i did not expect to go that far is gardevoir here playing you know the flutter main mimikyu cleft key and just kind of i think this is going to be the new gardevoir build going forward it seems to be a little bit not more aggressive per se but it seems to be a little bit more control focused having the flutter main and the cleft key and the mimikyu in there to kind of just disrupt your opponent make it a little bit difficult for them early game and then being able to use you know screamtail and Drifloon uh later on to kind of take some pretty big ko's also play Titan machine evolution i absolutely love that in um, Gardevoir, when I had played a Gardevoir a couple times the last couple weeks, um, I have really come to love having Technical Machine Evolution in the deck. I tried playing a couple games without Technical Machine Evolution and cut them for some other cards, and the deck felt awful. It did not feel good. Kind of losing the Mirage Step Curlia, I feel like you almost have to play Technical Machine Evolution at this point. Uh, I put this in Tier 2. I think it's still fairly true at tier two but like definitely top of tier two maybe bottom of tier 1.5 i actually would probably say more bottom of tier 1.5 um maybe like a little bit above like the lost box and arc fire or something but guard of war has definitely shown that it's still a thing you have to worry about in the meta and i think that's great uh chen power back scout where we had two of them here in top eight being regan red in the fourth one and Fabrazio in eighth place here. Um, I think the lists are very similar, actually almost identical, I believe. I think the only thing that's maybe different is one of them is playing Silene and one isn't, I believe. Um, but super cool. I am kind of glad that I put this in tier 1.5. I think it's still tier 1.5, but it's like the very top of tier 1.5. You might be able to put this in the bottom of tier 1. But the thing that I don't like about Chen Pao is... Sometimes you kind of just lose, especially if you hit too many really hard matchups. 
Um, which feels a little bad, but one of the cool parts about Chen Pao is it didn't lose a lot when Rotation came around, so it's very similar to the same deck it was before, and I feel like the deck has a lot of potential to, you know, win another regional and really show up. I just feel like it hasn't quite... The problem is, is Chen Pao and Lugia have the same problem, actually, is the hardest part about the deck is itself. Sometimes you just get really bad hands, and sometimes you just can't play the game, and you lack consistency at times, and you just have really bad bricked hands, um, and that kind of el like just eliminates you from being able to play the game at times. So tier 1.5 at the top of it feels good. Bottom of tier 1 also feels good. So 4th and 8th there. Another Charizard. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the William version that they were... Oh, no, this is also a Tortoise version, sorry, because there's a bit of the barrel. So once again, proving that it's definitely up here in S tier. And then we got uh, Moon Moon Dune, or Duns and Dragons. Uh, I put this in tier 1.5. I think you could put it at the bottom of tier 1.5. I think Ancient Box is definitely above this deck for sure. I think it's kind of proved that they're both on even grounds depending on what matchups you're hitting and stuff. However, the thing I like about Ancient Box over um, Duns and Dragons is Duns and Dragons, you have two prizes that they can attack and take two prize cards off of. However, with Ancient Box, you have a bunch of single prizes, so you force your opponent to have to take multiple prize cards, and all your single prize Pokemon are pretty bulky, being like 140 HP and things like that. So it's not like they can just cram it and take a KO, which is really nice as well. Or Sableye put 12 on as well is something else they can't do. Uh, we got a Lost Tina here. I had put Lost Tina up in Tier 1. Um, I've been playing Lost Tina a lot myself recently, as I played it a lot previous rotation. Um, and it's still pretty good. It seems to be definitely losing path in Battle VIP Pass hurts sometimes, because sometimes you can't get a second Tina V on the bench when you need one. And they can just like boss KO the first Tina, and you're kind of behind already, and it feels bad. Uh, it happened to me at a challenge I had went to, where I had one gear Tina V. They were like, boss, put a bunch of energies on Lugia, smack it. And I was like, yup, I can't do anything about that. So things like that feel bad about the deck, but the deck is still really good. I think Thornton is a great addition to the deck. I never thought about putting Thornton in here, but it does make a lot of sense being able to swap out a Comfey for a Giratina again, which is why they're actually at two Giratina Vs and three Giratina V stars, being able to add that Thornton there so you don't have to rely on getting that second Nest Ball. So I definitely like the Thornton here. It just seems you better hope it doesn't get prized because if not, then you have to rely on hitting, you know, one of your Nest Balls and being able to find a second Tina sometimes feels kind of bad. But I put this up in tier one. I think it's still pretty true at tier one. I think you could put this at the bottom of tier one, maybe top of tier 1.5, kind of like right next to Chen Pao or maybe a little bit above Chen Pao. I feel like would be a pretty good spot as well. Another Gardevoir here in ninth place, once again, showing that it does have stuff and still is a relevant deck. We got Lost Zone Box with like Raikou and Shaman to be able to deal with things like that. And this Groudon, this Groudon, 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 Groudon here, um, <laughs> being a really interesting tech in the deck. I thought it was really cool being able to discard up to four energies from your Pokemon. This set of 60 damage for each card you're discarding this way. Being a really nice um, single prize attacker into Arceus decks, I feel like is really good as well. But very cool. I definitely like the addition of Shaman to be able to deal with uh, Charizard and not have to put things like, you know, Roaring Moon X in the deck or anything like that. Being able to still fit the Iron Hands in here and the Raikou. So you're up a little bit higher with two Lightning Energy. A lot of people are kind of playing one just to have Iron Hands or Raikou. But if you're playing both, you almost have to play two or maybe even three. Um, Having three fighting energy also makes sense because they try, they're trying really hard to get to the Groudon. Maybe they were expecting a lot of, you know, stall or maybe expecting a lot of things like Arceus Dax and things like that. Um, so definitely putting those in here makes sense. You're also able to prey on kind of the barrels and hit those for weakness, which is really nice as well. And of course, being able to attach a basic fighting energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon is also nice. So if you're playing against stall, you can kind of just swelling power, put a bunch of energies on stuff. And then be able to manipulate things around there, which is really nice as well. Um, so really cool. Definitely a very unique deck. I never would have thought about Groudon and Shaman being in a deck here. I'm not going to call this Lost Paradox because it's very different. It doesn't play. This isn't like, this is like Lost Paradox Toolbox with like Moon and Iron Hands EX and stuff. But if I were to put this deck here with like the Raikou and Shaman in a tier I would probably put it at like top of tier 2, maybe bottom of tier 1.5. It's definitely a good deck and I can see why they put the certain pieces they did in here. 
but I don't think it has any better legs than the Lost Paradox deck does. Uh, we got two Arctinas back to back here playing two Badoof, Poopa Barrel, two Giratina V, two Giratina V Star, Radiant Gardevoir, Iron Leaves, you know, four Trekking Shoes. So you're trying to kind of just basically old Arctina almost in a way without playing paths and stuff like that. You're still trying to, you know, Iono and Judge and trying to disrupt your opponent a little bit, having Lost Vacuum to be able to deal with, you know, heavy batons and other maximum belts and stuff, which is really nice as well. So I put this, I believe, in Tier 2. I think it's still Tier 2. There was a lot more decks in Day 2 that were Arctina. I would think putting this at the top of Tier 2 is for sure. So probably somewhere like up here, maybe a little bit above Lugia would also be good. Um, but Arctina definitely showing up here. We got Pidgeot uh, Zard here. This is just a straight Pidgeot Zard, not towards Zard. Once again, I would just classify this as S tier. The deck is really good, even without Babero. Um, it has a lot of answers. Uh, I, I also also was expecting to see more of the Regilecki thing that everyone was doing for a while, but we didn't see much of that. Got Future Hands here. You know, just doing the thing where you're playing heavy lightning energy. You're trying to generate a bunch of energies on. I have put this in tier 1.5. I still feel like this is very true. I think Future Hands is a very good deck, especially if you can hit certain matchups. You hit a bunch of Lugias or a bunch of Lost Box decks and stuff. You're going to have a great time. But the moment you hit things like, I feel like Zard is kind of tough. Um, I also feel like control is a little hard. Um, even if you have the energy capsule, it doesn't matter because if they have like Snorlax up there, you can't retreat anyway. So things like that is definitely pretty cool. More Charizards here. We got another Chempow. We got our first Lugia here by Zach Lesage, um, playing four resources. I thought was actually kind of crazy. Um, but if you kind of make sure you're putting your energies in the right place at the right time, you can set it up so your researches aren't discarding a lot of valuable resources i had put lugia down here in tier two um i would think i'd put it up here in tier 1.5 maybe like next to pow i don't think it's better than pow i think it's definitely a like right next to it though however a lot of people played lugia to orlando um and had quite a bit of success with it as well and there was a lot of different lists i've seen people playing you know, one Luminion and playing, you know, like a Word Deer. I saw people playing, you know, not four Professor Reachers, but playing like Heavy Iono instead. I saw people playing, um, you know, different counts of energies, playing, you know, four Double Turbo and then playing, you know, 17 energies, playing like four Double Turbo and then having, you know, one V Guard, three Mist. So it all kind of depends on what you're going to expect, I guess, which is kind of nice. You can swap your energies around in Lugia depending on what the meta looks like. You know, if you think there's going to be more. Giratina V stars and going to be more things like that where those Pokemon V they're going to be hitting for more damage. You can put more Vigar energies in there. But if you think there's going to be a lot of decks like, you know, Star Requiming, I guess, which is also still a Giratina V star. Um, but if you think there's going to be a lot of more like Roaring Moon EX where you're trying to try to Fred Gouging or things like that or Sableye Lost Mines like Lost Box, I guess Lost Sable Zard or things like that, you can put more Mist energy in there, which is really nice. So that's one of the cool things I like about Lugia is you're able to swap around energies and stuff. Um, and then, of course, you got the new Sincino hitting very hard here as well. Um, so very nice there. I definitely think, once again, up in tier 1.5 would be a good place for it. Another Charizard deck here. I believe this is, yeah, a kind of a variant of Tordzard. Um, but instead of playing the 2 Pidgey, 2 Pidgeot, they're playing 2 Badoo, 2 Babero. So more of like a Bibzard than a Pidgeot Zard with Babero in it. But still, once again, I would put this up here in S tier. It's kind of the same type of deck you know, Bibzard, and if you're playing both, I'm just going to call it Tordzard, but if you're playing alone Bib, then I would put it down here um, and just call it Bibzard. But we got Dialga Matang here, a deck that I did not expect to do super well, but once again, had one here in 21st place, so definitely has some legs. I had put this down here in tier 2.5. I still think the deck has a lot of issues. There's just sometimes where your metal makers run hot and sometimes your metal makers run really just kind of low and they don't hit a lot of things, which kind of feels bad. But I would probably put this in tier two, maybe like the middle of tier two, kind of like above Gardevoir a little bit here, right there. But once again, I think Dialga is a deck and I think people are gonna play it. I don't think you have to tech for it or anything, but it is real here. A couple more future hands. We got Arc Armor Rouge finally showing up again. I had put in this deck before at EUIC down here in like tier 2.5, and I put it up in tier 1.5 this time. And I still feel like that's really true. A lot of people are playing Arc Firebox. I think, did we have one further up? No, this was the first place one. This was the closest, best place one, I guess. Um, so definitely was a deck that I was not expecting to do as good 
at EUIC, but it did pretty decent at Orlando. I You can put this at, like, the bottom of Tier 1.5, and even after you move all this stuff, you know, kind of putting Lugia and stuff up here and everything else, I would say Arcfire is definitely at the bottom of Tier 1.5, top of Tier 2 for sure. I think it has a lot of potential, um, and I think it's a really good deck. You have a lot of answers to a lot of things, being like Delphox, and you have the Gouging Fire to be able to hit big damage if you need it, Radiant Heatran to be able to have a nice single prize attacker as well. And then we got another Lost Zone box here. This one playing, kind of playing the other version that we have seen with like Hoopa and Roaring Moon, which is what I was calling this Lost Paradox. Once again, I think this deck is very interesting because in the right hands, this deck is tier one or tier 1.5. In the wrong hands, it's tier two or it's tier 2.5. If someone isn't as fluent in it as other people are, the deck's very difficult to play, but very nice to see the deck showing up here again. Got our first, like, true stall deck with, like, Chiyu and stuff. I put this down in Tier 2. I The hard part about stall is there's just other control decks that just seem to be better in the format right now. You could put this in Tier 2, and I would un I would totally get it. I think it'd be fine to put that up there in Tier 2. Um, so, definitely a better control variant in the format right now. But if you wanted to play just straight stall, then you are able to do so with this list here. So definitely very nice to see Stahl also doing well. Got some Lost Sablezard here. That was the first Lost Sablezard, but then we start to see a lot more as we go down. I had put Lost Sablezard in tier two. I think it's at the top of tier two, maybe top of tier 1.5, or at the bottom of tier 1.5, sorry. Um, Lost Sablezard is another one of those decks, kind of along with Lost Paradox, is in the right hands when someone knows how to play the deck very well, this deck is going to shine. But with the average Pokemon player, the deck is very hard to play, as most Lost Box decks are. I would probably argue and say Lost Tina is probably the easiest Lost Box decks to play. And then you have Lost Paradox and Lost Sablezard, which tend to be the harder Lost Box decks to play. Once again, I feel like Lost Sablezard could go in Tier 1.5 and be okay. You maybe put this in Tier, at the top of Tier 2, I think would also be fine as well. Another Ancient Box here. A couple more Lugias. Like I said, there was tons of Lugia in Day 2. Um, but the best placing was Zach Lesage at 19. Um, and then we got some more Lost Sablezard. We got another Lost Zone box. And this one is playing the Raikou and the Hoopa. So kind of like a more Lost Paradox type style here. And then we got a Sprotha EX now. Brayden has played this deck twice now. He played it at EUIC and has played it at Orlando. And I put this deck in tier 2.5. I don't know if I was a, a bird believer if it were. However, I have played this deck a little bit more myself. And I've had some pretty okay success with it there's definitely a learning curve to the deck um you got to make sure that you're not decking yourself because you very much can very quickly just being able to put a bunch of energies on stuff with zatu and then drawing a bunch of cards this deck is real and i think it has potential and i think a lot of people are sleeping on it but i don't think it's to the point to where oh my gosh this deck's gonna break the meta everyone's gotta worry about Aspratha. No, no, no. It's definitely like a rogue deck for sure. I don't think it's anything better than tier two at the moment. But it's still really cool to see uh, the bird showing up here and showing that it is a thing. And especially, like I said, Braden has played it. You know, EUIC got 26 and then got 43rd at Orlando. So pretty good. Got another Chimpao, more Arctina. Another Chimpao. We got Roaring Moon here. Now, this Roaring Moon is not... It's kind of like the... Not quite the Dun Dun uh, Sparse one, the Moon Moon Dune or whatever. Um, this one's playing like the Big Roaring Moon and the, like Roaring Moon EX, but it's playing Badoof Babero and not the Dun Sparses as a draw engine. So, a little bit different. I would still call it, you know, kind of like this version, though it's very similar. The only thing that's different is the draw engine they have in the deck. But I would still, once again, I would kind of keep that up there at tier 1.5. Maybe come down to tier 2 probably with that as well. A couple more Champions, Moon Lost Tina, Lugia. Um, some Roaring Moon to Dunsparce down here. Another Dialga. We got another Gardevoir, Arctina. We got our first Goldango here at 67th place. Now, once again, Goldango is one of those decks where everybody kind of thought that it was dead per se, but it it isn't. It's a it's a deck and it's real. I had played against one at a League Challenge and I got smoked. You know, I won game two, sure, at a best of three, but ultimately I ended up losing. And Goldango is a real deck. I had put this in tier two. I still think it's very true at tier two. Probably like, you can go up a little bit and maybe put it up here at tier two, kind of kind of close to the top. Goldengo, if you've been playing it and you know the deck very well, I would say just kind of keep rolling with it. You know, maybe change a couple things to what the meta looks like and maybe things like that. Maybe try to make your bad matchups a little bit better if you can, taking out maybe one tech card for another tech card. Um, but if you've been playing Goldango and you know the deck, just keep rolling with it. It's a good deck. It's still real. It still has potential. So very cool there. 
Couple more Chen Pals, another Future Hands here. I'm waiting to see if any of these things are different. We got another Gardevoir deck. Once again, Gardevoir showing up still here as well. Another Stall deck. Is it playing the Chi Yu and stuff? So it's playing the Manton, actually, which I like the Manton in this deck. Kind of replaced the Echoing Horn, being able to use that Born Ashore, put a basic Pokemon from either Pokemon's discard pile onto that player's bench. So you can also do this for yourself as well, being able to put a basic Pokemon putting Snorlax back onto the bench if you don't have another way to get one, which is kind of cool. So once again, I'd still put that in Tier 2 as well. And then uh, another Lost Box deck here. This one playing like Miniorn and stuff, Iron Valiant, Iron Crown. So a little bit more of a future type Lost Box deck. Um, not quite like Lost Box spread, but I would definitely say definitely Lost Zone Toolbox, but with different answers to things, trying to prey on kind of more of the single prizers. But it's interesting because you're not playing the, um, or you are playing Iron Hands. But I would have also thought that one Iron Crown feels a little interesting. I don't know if I would just put in the one Iron Crown or maybe just go into something else. Maybe put in like a like a Raikou V or maybe something like that. So then you don't have to solely rely on Luminion and Shaman for your Forest Seal Stone. But still really cool. I, I'm glad to see all the different Lost Box decks kind of getting cooked up. If I were to put this like Lost Future Box deck, Lost, I don't know, I think a Lost Future Toolbox I'd probably put it in like tier 2, tier 1.5. It's a deck, it's real, it's a thing. People are playing, I've seen on the ladder a couple times. Um, but I don't think it's anything crazy you have to worry about too, too much. We got Pidgeot Control here with Wiggly Tough and stuff. And I believe this is actually All Out Blitzel, another uh, Pokemon YouTuber. So very big shout out to him as well, being able to play this Wiggly Tough. He's been playing it a lot. I've been kind of watching some of his videos sometimes where he's playing this. So very nicely done, playing that Wiggle, Wiggly Tough there getting all the way up there. I don't know if I would call this tier one because it's a very different Pidgeot control deck. I would kind of call it like tier 1.5 if I'd put this Wigglytuff control solely into something because Wigglytuff is a good chunk of the deck. And it's kind of one of your big win conditions is that oh, Wigglytuff there. Another Arc Armor Rouge. We got Arc Gudra here showing up. Now I had put Arc Gudra in Rogue slash bad. I think it's still very true. I think it's a rogue deck. I don't think it's a bad deck. I think it's a rogue deck. You can kind of put it up here in tier 2.5, probably a little bit above some of these other things here. I'd probably say it right next to like maybe a Sprotha. These kind of sit at the top of tier 2.5. So I'd probably say this is pretty good. Get the hero's cape in there, make Gudra really big, really hard to deal with. Um, our Gudra is a deck that I played a little bit just a couple times. Now, Maridon is a deck I did not expect to see at all. Just even coming back at all, I put it down here in Rogue Slash Bad. I literally, I think even in the EUIC video, I said, don't play this deck. This deck is dead. It's not real. Don't play it at all. But people are playing it. You got heavy cons of lightning energy. You got electric generators. You got energy stickers. So you're doing the thing that Future Hands is doing where you're just trying to rely on generators and stuff. You don't really have the Flaffy anymore. However, you get the Cabalion in there as well to be able to try to deal with Charizard's a little bit easier, I feel like. Or maybe even like Roaring Moons to be able to hit them for weakness a little bit easier with, you know, Maridon only hitting 220, get the Cobalion in there, being able to, uh, to your, to be able to do just a little bit more damage to get that 10 more damage to that Roaring Moon. So pretty cool to see it up here. I would still kind of put it in Rogue slash Bad. You could probably put it up in Tier 2. I don't think it's a super real deck. I think it maybe just kind of hits some of the right matchups to get there, but I also could be very wrong as well. Uh, kick come down, some more Charizard, more Charizard, more Lugia, more Lost Box. Uh, Lost Zone Gudra. Now, I don't have a, like, box for Lost Zone Gudra. Um, but if I were to put Lost Zone Gudra, I'd probably put it in, like, Tier 2.5. It's kind of next to Arc Gudra. They're very similar in how they play. Um, but, once again, it's a deck. People play it. It's real. I believe it had won the Juniors Division at EUIC. So, definitely a deck that people are still playing. Uh, Future Box. Now, I put Future Box in Tier 2.5. I think Future Box is still a decent play for a lot of things. If you've been playing Future Box and you don't want to play Future Hands, it's definitely a deck you can play. You still play Future Hands, but you're not playing, you know, the Electric Generators and solely relying on the Ampy very much and the Arm Presses to do big damage. I would probably have Future Box probably a little bit above on Tier 2.5, a little bit higher up. I don't think it's a fantastic deck. I think it's a deck that people are playing. But I don't think it's something that you really need to worry about that much. Another Goldengo deck here. Got Arc Vulpix. Now, Arc Vulpix is another deck that I had put in pretty low. I put it in Tier 2.5. I think you could put this in Tier 2 only because if you hit certain matchups, you're going to have a fantastic 
time. You're hitting Charizards, you're hitting things like that. You can just kind of Vulpix people out of the game with Snow Mirage a lot of the times. I think the 1-1 one -one line of Regigigas is pretty cool as well. I think being able to also attack with um, Pidgeot EX in the deck is something that you can also do, which is really cool. Uh, being able to have that Quick Search is really nice, especially after your Starbirth is gone, you still have that Quick Search ability to be able to find things and do stuff. Um, Prime Catcher also kind of makes sense. I would also see things like maybe Hero's Cape being in this deck to kind of make your Vulpix a little bit more bulky, getting into 340 damage. 240 is kind of low. However, definitely something here. So I would probably say maybe like a little bit above Future Box, maybe bottom of Tier 2, just because sometimes you can Vulpix, Vulpix people right out of the game. Uh, Great Tusk Mill, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this. Great Tusk Mill is a deck that's going to, one deck is going to, one list is going to make Tier Day 2 every time. It's bottom of Tier 2.5. It's... It's a deck, and if you're hitting your supporters every time, you're probably going to do fine. You're probably going to mill them out, and everything will be great. You hit an Arceus deck, you can just die, Giant Tusk for KOs a bunch of times. But the moment you hit something like, you know, Lost Box is kind of hard sometimes. Gardevoir is kind of tough sometimes. Decks that aren't really... Decks that can still play without having to draw a lot of cards. Kind of how, like, Lost Tina just kind of shreds its way to victory. That's something that you can also do in that matchup, and it works out pretty well, I feel like. So, Great Tusk Mill, making it to day two. Not shocked, but don't want to put it any higher. Now, there's a Sprotha deck here, showing that it is a deck. Arc Drago is a deck that I don't have on the TOS, but once again, I'm going to put it in a rogue category. You know, your you're only really big things is you got Vulpix in the deck, which is great. You got Rage Drago V-Star, so you're putting in Coridon, You're putting in Altaria for the Soothing Lullaby. Gudra V-Star, Neuvern, and Giratina to be able to kind of just have that toolboxy type element to it. But the Hero's Cape is really nice because you can make your Reggie Drogo get really bulky and then still be able to hit 280 with Lost Impact or being able to use that Rolling Iron so it takes even less damage by 80 because Rolling Iron's 200 during your opponent's next turn. This Pokemon takes 80 less damage from its attacks. So being able to really just kind of disrupt your opponent and stuff, I would probably put this in like top of Rogue. I don't think it's a bad deck. I don't think it's a bad deck at all. I think it's a deck that people play. And I think it's definitely something that if you're not prepared for it, you're not expecting Arc Drago, it's going to catch you off guard. Um, so keep coming down here. We got Lost Zone Raging Bolt. Now, Lost Zone Raging Bolt is a deck that people are kind of hyping up. And I think there was only like one list that made it into day two, but I don't have a thing for it here. So I'm just going to use this Raging Bolt icon for it. I think it's bottom of tier 2.5, probably above some of these other ones here. But the thing with Lost Zone Raging Bolt is there's just better Lost Box decks to play, I feel like. And Raging Bolt is one of those things where it's kind of fitting into a lot of stuff. You can play with Origin Full Palkia, you can play with Gardevoir, you can play it with, you know, um, Sandy Shocks, you can play it with the Lost Box engine. So Raging Bolt can kind of fit into a lot of things, but it doesn't have a perfect home per se, because a lot of those decks are very similar on the same playing field, I feel like. Um, coming down here, we got, let's get another Esprotha deck, Arctina, a couple more Lugias, more Stall, more Chimpao, another Maraidon down here. Um, we got a couple more, like I said, more Lost Box, more Charizard, um, another Goldango, Arc Gudra um, down here in the bottom as well. Now, I do want to take a moment to look at some of the other regionals real quick. I'm not going to spend too much time on them, but I want to look at the Singapore one and the Perth regionals, more so because I think they're funny, if anything. Um, Perth regionals, we got top eight here being pretty much almost all Charizard. So one, two, three, four, and then five of the top eight is Charizard. A lot of them playing towards Zard or Regilecki. Zard or just kind of tagging the Regilecki, but still playing a towards Zard variant. I believe this one's playing, yeah, towards Zard, but then they took one Regilecki for that control type variant. Got a Lugia making it in here as well, which is really cool. Got a Meow Scarada making it in here, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, just take a look at this real quick. I don't have a tier list for it or anything. You know, I'm not really going to worry about that part of this. But having the evolution and the de evolution, kind of like a controly type Meow Scarada deck, which I think is really cool. Um, so pretty cool seeing Meow Scarada make it in there. I like that. Now, now Dialga. Got an Arctina, Gardevoir, and stuff. But a lot of Charizard, once again. I mean, if we look at the statistics, Charizard was 31% um, of the Day 2 meta. And then Luga coming in at second. So, very cool. And then we got the Singapore Regionals. We don't have all the deck lists here, but we can at least look at the top 16. You got Last Tina winning it. You got a Charizard. Um, this playing straight up like kind of Bibzard. I will, since there wasn't one in Orlando, what I will do is I will talk about it a little bit. 
I think Bibzard is still tier 2.5 because since Tortoise kind of came out with his Charizard list, there's just a better way to play Charizard than just straight Bibzard. And that's kind of the problem is you can still play Bibaro in a Charizard deck, but just add it with Pidgeot and it still works and it fits and it makes sense. And it has proven to have better legs than either straight Pidgeot Zard or even more legs than just straight Bibzard. So I feel like just straight Bibzard is like tier 2.5. Um, just play towards Zard or play Pidgeot Zard. It's just better, which is sad because I really liked Bibzard and I still do. It's pretty fun to play. Got a couple Arctinas in here. Once again, a uh, Lugia deck. Got a Gardevoir deck. Got a Future Hands. Um, got Ancient Box. You got Roaring Moon. I can't tell if this is like the um, Dunson Dragons or Moon Moon Dune or if it's like the one we had seen earlier in Orlando where it's playing, you know, Roaring Moon EX and like the Barrel Draw Engine. Um, I can't really tell if that is that though. So very cool. I'm kind of... I feel like I was pretty close on a lot of these in the tier list, which feels pretty good. So definitely something cool to talk about. And I was having a lot of fun doing it. So let's jump right in to that outro. Alrighty, that's going to do it for today's video. But I want to hear you guys' thoughts and opinions. So let me know down in the comments what deck you guys would have played had you gone to Orlando Regionals. I probably would have played either Lost Tina or Lugia. Those are decks that I've been playing most of the time. So, but I want to hear you guys' thoughts and opinions. If you guys have been enjoying the content I've been making, start for here on the channel. Don't forget to leave a like, smash a subscribe button. I really would appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.